Thank you, everybody. I'm going to try and inspire you and let you know why I am excited today about being alive today. So Connect for Climate is a global partnership program based at the World Bank. Uh, we collaborate with more than 500 partners around the world to share knowledge, inspire climate solutions, and promote ambitious action. Uh, we target the uh, influential industries, including film, fashion, music, sports, as well as design and technology. And it's really around that space that we need to get active on. Um, so this is the quote that uh, came out of the climate conference. COP23 happened here in Bonn in this venue. And we worked with the Fijians as well as the Germans to come up with the messaging that we are uniting for climate action. We're going further, we're going faster, and we're going together. And it's really the further and faster that needs to be tackled because we know we're going together already. We've got all countries on board with the Paris Climate Agreement. We've got businesses, local and, and city leaders. We've got individuals, civil society, all coming together saying that we need to really get serious about climate change. Um, and it's a further and faster that really underlined what the discussions were here in Bonn because we heard that we're already at 1.5 degrees Celsius. We know that climate is affecting today's society. We're seeing the extreme weather events. We're seeing the hurricanes. Um, and it's really the poor who are most affected. And, and that's the message that Connect for Climate helps to relay is that you know, we will never end poverty if we don't tackle climate change because tackling climate change and addressing our poverty situation around the world goes hand in hand, as does sustainable development. So looking at the past, we went through a, you know, a stone age, and we left that behind not because we ran out of stones, but because we came up with new technologies and innovations. Same thing for the Bronze Age. Same thing for the Iron Age. We left it behind, not because we ran out of iron ore, but we're still using iron ore today. But today, we're actually producing iron ore, uh, zero carbon iron ore in Sweden, where they harness wind energy to um, create hydrogen and then use that hydrogen to fire up their furnaces, to smelt the iron, and hence we get zero carbon iron. Then we went into uh, the Industrial Revolution, and we had the water wheel, the steam engine, uh, electricity helped progress us. And then fossil fuels obviously drove a lot of our uh, global uh, economic growth and development. And we thank fossil fuels for that. But we are now on the cusp of a new revolution, the sustainability revolution. And that is really where our society is shifting. It's driven by technology and innovation. And to, to highlight a quote on that from Al Gore, we're in the early stages of a sustainability revolution that is at the scale of the industrial revolution, but at the speed of the digital revolution. And that's really why I am excited about being alive today. It's not because of the climate impacts, it's because of the fact that we're going to be solving this. And we are all going to be a part of that. Um, so maybe just to highlight some of the World, World Bank's work around this. We recently uh, presented 12 transformative solutions that the World Bank is working around uh, for the One Planet Summit. Um, so to look into those, um, we presented Resilient Coasts. So it's working with 17 projects, uh, 17 countries in West Africa to build up their resilience around coastal erosion. We know already 500,000 people are affected in West Africa and and the rising sea level and, and the erosion and, and flooding that's taking place is um, costing those countries around 2% of their GDP. The second transformative solution was tr climate insur insurance. As the climate impacts become more severe, more impactful, it's really about uplifting those who are most affected and giving them in the insurance policies. The third was Climate Smart Agriculture, and we have heard a lot about that here at the Landscapes Forum. The World Bank invests about $4 billion uh, in commitments around Climate Smart Agriculture uh, annually. Um, then Resilient Cities, we've got the Resilient Cities program, where we know that 2.5 billion people will be moving into cities over the next 25 years. 
and cities are responsible for about 70% of the greenhouse gases. So that is a, a tangible and a very effective place to help institutionalize the sustainable revolution. Mobility, sustainable mobility is uh, the uh, fifth transformative solution that we presented. And that's really because mobility uh, produces about 23% of our greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels. Um, we are helping shift to uh, electric as well as a hydrogen-driven mobility infrastructure and come up, coming up with innovations such as a bus rapid transport system. Landscapes and forests, about $1.3 billion of our forest-related work uh, goes into forest uh, restoration and forest protection. We heard it already from Paula Augustini earlier. Hydromet, again, at the core of hydrometeorological services is technology and innovation. And that we're targeting now for the sub-Saharan continent, African continent. Green bonds, these are innovative financing tools. So again, innovation is driving the new economy. And this year, green bonds are surpassing $130 billion, uh, which uh, helps drive the uh, renewable energy revolution. Carbon pricing, we know that carbon pricing um, should be around the level of 40 to $80, according to the Stern report, um, by 2020. And we're helping build a coalition. We just heard yesterday, or it might have been this morning, that China now is actually implementing the largest uh, emission trading scheme. And that is really innovative market mechanisms to help drive the sustainable revolution. Geothermal, the often untold uh, renewable energy solution, in Indonesia, we're helping them build one gigawatts of geothermal. Of course, we've all heard of solar, rooftop, large-scale solar farms. Um, the rollout of that has been exponential, and that has driven costs down to record lows and made it competitive with coal-fired uh, electricity. Finally, we focused on uh, energy efficiency in India because that's a low-hanging fruit. And it's estimated that in India, you can actually save up to $11 billion just by implementing uh, efficiency solutions such as uh, LED lights, as well as capturing heat and repurposing that. <clears throat> so overall, building the sustainable revolution is a huge opportunity, estimated to be around $90 trillion by the new climate economy over the next 15 years. That is the kind of investment that uh, the world has not seen previously, and, and that is something that we should really be excited about, being a part of that new industrial revolution. So the digital um, world is helping drive these technologies and innovations, and for that we've got a video about Hack for Climate. Here at COP23, on the Fiji, our small island hacker boat. We're together with 100 hackers coming from 30 different countries, united for climate action. We have this biggest problem the world faces, climate change, and this huge innovation driver, distributed ledger technology or blockchain, and there was no connection. There's a huge gap between the uh, people who make policies and the people who are working with new technologies. Whereas when you put them together, you can come up with complete new solutions. We want to bridge this gap between innovation and regulation. The main aim for us to organize a hackathon during COP23 is to bring those two together as closely as possible. Blockchain is a set of thousands of nodes where a complete ledger is running. So what's the impact? It's transparency. Everyone has access to the same information. It is secure because you can only add information. You cannot modify or take it out. And it is efficient because you can take out the man in the middle role. And so could really be an important part of climate action. You see all the people working here. They are working on solutions. We're working on an app called Evoke. 
trying to personalize climate change through story and using blockchain technology. It makes it more real for people who may not know what it's like living on an island where this writing is at sea level. So it's just bringing that a little closer to them so that they're able to do something about it. Our team, we are working on something we call an energy island. We are making a model where you just implement a couple of devices that can trade their energy between the devices for off-grid areas where there's no energy at all. And the deals are then paid for and registered on the blockchain. 24 hours is not a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. but, I mean, that's just like climate change. I mean, we're running out of time. We at Hack for Climate are uniting for climate. And we think with blockchain, we can go a lot further, a lot faster, and definitely more together. So, so really, digital progress is helping our technology and our innovation to drive those solutions that we need to tackle climate change. But it's not only that. Obviously, we also have to look at our consumer patterns. We have to uh, encourage bold leadership. And that's where the, the World Bank has come forward with a statement that they're not going to finance upstream oil and gas from 2019. Um, and it's that kind of leadership that we as young people also need to embrace and support and be a part of. So just to highlight, uh, during the moon landing, when at that time it was the biggest challenge of that generation to get somebody onto the moon, what do you think was the average age in the control room of the engineers? You might think 40, 30. It was actually 26. So it was young engineers that helped solve that generation's challenge. And that is what we need for our generation's challenge, for the climate challenge. So with that, I, I just want to close on um, the Minister of, uh, Prime Minister of Fiji's quote that we do not need to fear the future if we have the courage to act now. And we certainly have the courage. So let us not fear the future. Let's embrace it and enjoy it. Thank you very much.